Good morning and welcome to St. John Lutheran Church here in Montgomery, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Jason Fonkton and I welcome you who are gathering on this day. Uh, we give thanks for all those who continue to be participating in life for this congregation and you are one of them. So thank you for continuing to be a support and for continuing to share in our time together. In this time of word gathered in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just a few announcements for the care of the congregation. We just want to lift up uh, on the 24th of January, we're going to be having our annual meeting for St. John Lutheran. And so as a part of that, we're going to be having to do a hybrid uh, annual meeting, which means that uh, part of it will be in person and those choosing to be at home will be able to connect through uh, your digital devices to be able to continue to connect through Zoom. Uh, you can do that in two ways. Uh, one is through an uh, electronic device, such as a tablet, a computer, or a smartphone. Or you can also be able to call in. So we want to make sure that this is open to those people who might not have access to uh, those digital devices as well. So more information will that be coming out. We're going to be planning on mailing out uh, the annual report here very shortly. Uh, there are a couple items, so please take a look at it. Uh, information within our newsletter talks about uh, some changes as far as uh, the term for the treasurer position that we're looking at changing. Um, also, as a part of this, the council has had to make uh, a change or an adoption of, uh, to our constitution dealing with uh, being able to have a digital uh, annual meeting. So that is part of it. Also, while we're doing that, we're looking at updating our constitution to the model constitution for the LCA. Uh, and so what that means is there's sections of that uh, need to be consistent with churches within the LCA, and those areas will be uh, able to be seen. Uh, if you look at the documents that are in the information center, uh, underneath the constitution bylaws, you'll be able to take a look at uh, the things that are needing to be changed and then the final adopted document. So please take the time to take a look at that. Uh, links are in the newsletter and you can just be able to go into the website as well to look at the information center for that information. So as we continue to look forward to that time to celebrate what ministry we did do here uh, during 2020 and what's ahead of us, we give thanks uh, that you continue to be a part of that still. Now we'll continue uh, with our confession of forgiveness of sins. We gather this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call of our dean minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us continue our service with the prayer of the day. Please join together with us at this time. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll now continue with our psalm for this Sunday. Our psalm is 147. I'll be reading those to Mark P. If you'd follow with those to Mark C. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. 
for he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool and scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. We'll now continue our service with the lighting of the Advent candles. Once again, this is a thing that has come to pass, but is also a warm portion of our Christmas time. So let us pray. We give you thanks, God, our Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim us your will. As we light these candles, Lord God, may your word become flesh through our lives so that we may see him in the fullness of his glory. Amen. reading from Jeremiah 31, verses 7 through 14. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud in the height of Zion and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson comes from Ephesians 1 verses 3 to 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless, blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. 
In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him, who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope in Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is a pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As a part of our service for today, the Director for Evangelical Mission within our Synod, uh, Pastor Emily Carson, who is also an assistant to the bishop, is going to be giving our sermon for this day. We give thanks that this is a part of uh, what the Synod has done to help us get a little relief during this time, but also to continue to be connected with our larger Synod. So we give thanks for her for this time. Today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. Here ends the reading. Beginnings are important. Where we start a story shapes its meaning. Christmas isn't the beginning. Christmas is a continuation of an eternal story. That's where the Gospel of John begins. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John invites us right from the start of his account of Jesus into a cosmological imagination. He doesn't start by orienting us to a particular geographic place. He doesn't identify a particular intended audience either. Instead of zooming way in on the details of Jesus' birth, John zooms way out. It's like John leads us, his hearers, out into the woods on a clear night and then says, look up to a sky full of stars. The story starts here. The Gospel of John is the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, and it's also the story of the birth of creativity and humanity and existence. Interestingly, for a book about Jesus, John doesn't even use Jesus' earthly name until verse 17 of chapter 1. Instead, he refers to Jesus as the Word, or in the original Greek, Logos. Right off the bat, John invites his hearers into a new way of hearing, thinking, and being. Perhaps we might benefit from a similar reorientation to the world around us. Can we zoom way out from the dynamics of this complicated, challenging year for a moment and find our way back to the beginning of the beginning? Can this Christmas season be an invitation to look up and look around in a new way? What might we notice from a different perch? John, in these first few verses of the Gospel, describes an infinite, eternal thread that runs through all existence. He calls this thread Logos, the Word. Everything is woven into being through this thread, and nothing that exists is outside the Word. He says that the Word is life, and this life is a light for all humanity. Christmas, the story of Jesus' birth, isn't the beginning. It's a continuation of a story that stretches all the way backward and all the way forward. Christmas is an important chapter of an ongoing story of a God who brings possibility into being. The way John describes Logos is not like a traditional commentary on a human person. There is no reference to the size or stature or status of Logos. Instead, John describes Logos like a force. Logos is at work in every moment of every day in every life. 
This is where John starts the story of Jesus. Before there was an infant in a manger, there was a word, and that word changed everything. That word brought and still brings everything into being. People of God, as you look up and look around, as you look in and look out, what do you notice? Where have you experienced the word that is the light of all humanity? 2020, for all its wounds and complications, has also been a year in which the light continued to shine. We see things that we didn't see before. We feel things that we didn't feel before. It's hard and it aches. There's tension, there's injustice, there's hurt in our individual households and in our families, in our churches and in our world. We all know deep down that 2020 isn't the beginning of the story of all this brokenness. The heaviness of this year didn't just appear when the first Minnesotan contracted coronavirus or when the mandatory shutdowns began in March. A lot of what's hard and broken and uncomfortable is systemic and all tangled together. Political turmoil, racial injustice, economic inequity, 2020 isn't the beginning of these stories. The word, the light, has empowered us this year to see more clearly what was already there. And this seeing equips us to act and live in new ways. Noticing what has been illuminated this year has given many a chance to reimagine how we do life, how we do church, how we spend money, and how we are together. Congregations have said yes to worshiping and living together in new ways. People have said yes to being family and loving neighbor in new ways. We won't stop here. We will continue on, and we will do so knowing that this moment is an opportunity to practice what the Word, the Logos, has been authoring all along. Lives and faith communities rooted in justice, mercy, humility, and love. John's telling of the Christmas story begins with the word. This word has always been and will always be. It's around us and within us. It's in you, right now in 2020 and always. The story didn't start here, and it won't stop here either. Look up. Look around, look in, look out. There is nothing outside the reach of the word. The word that is ever illuminating. The word that is always breathing life. The word that forever grants hope to the weary. May you know, trust, and experience the word made flesh. May your congregation know, trust, and experience the word made flesh. And may this word, this perspective granter, this Jesus, forever remain the center of our Christmas and the center of our lives. Amen.
this time, may we receive an offering for the care and concern of the ministries of this congregation, for this community which we're a part, and the world to which we've been sent out. We give thanks for all of you who continue to support the ministry here at St. John. Through your continued support, through your contributions, either through mail or through online giving, we give thanks for that as we continue to have those things that are necessary for us to continue ministry here at this time and place, and also look forward to the future when we can actually continue with our ministry together. We also want to give thanks for everybody who continues to share in their giving as far as their time and talents, the way they can help out with services, to the time that you reach out to one another in your own ways, through phone calls and reaching out, touching base with somebody who you haven't heard from in a long time. These are the things that continue to allow us to be stewards of what God has given us in the ministry here at St. John. And in this, we give thanks. Amen. Now, joining together with the whole Christian church, let us confess together our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Let us pray. Gracious God, fill your church with joy. Let your faithful people live as beacons of your redemption. Give wisdom and courage to your church that it may speak with boldness and confidence even when words of mercy are met with scorn. Lord, in your mercy, show us your faithfulness in the rising and the setting of the sun Place wonder into the hearts of those who search the skies and explore the heavens. Curb waste and pollution that all might have clean air to breathe and water to drink. Lord, in your mercy. Bring all nations and rulers to the splendor of your dawn. Raise up advocates who champion the causes of the exploited and vulnerable people. Inspire leaders to be generous with abundance that all people might live in stability and freedom. Lord, in your mercy. Come quickly with your healing power to all who seek love, support, and restoration. Dispel fears and shadows. Restore broken relationships and mend broken hearts. Bring relief to those who are sick or struggling. We lift up to you, Aubrey Robert. Rick Hanslick, Karen Vlasic, Jerry Smith, Don Stoffer, Cindy Lighthizer, Eileen Chapman, Darlene Lombard, Amelia Bajowski, Wayne Shoning, Jean Wong, Oswald Schultz, Kristen Flaris, Rich Fargo, Fern Beely, Jackie Eiberg, Lucinda Rose, Ralph Hendrickson, Dallas Horish. Paul and Phyllis Wodersky, Lloyd Piscato, Milo Kaminsky, Lloyd Zavoda, Alan Heaney, Terry Nish, Dean Hartman, Ken Meyer, Katie Lagrum, Diane Levine Schultz, Tom McClune, Tom Trenda, Greg Vlasic, Pastor Bob Voda, Amy Corthius, and Nancy Greer. We lift up to you the servicemen and women of our country, especially those serving from our congregation. Travis Ferguson, Cassidy Gilbertson, Ashley Noisky, Adam Vlasic, Sam Westerhouse, and Brandon Vanhoff. We give thanks for the doctors, nurses, and all who are in the medical field who continue to support those who are in need of care. Be with those who need healing. Provide support to 
protection for those who care. Lord, in your mercy, send traveling mercies upon all who journey home for the roads, guard refugees, immigrants, and asylum seekers, protect families fleeing conflict in their homelands or abuse in their homes, tend to those who have no place to lay their heads. Lord, in your mercy, According to the boundless riches of Christ, you draw all your saints, from the least to the greatest, to your heavenly places. As you created all things, make all things new again in the splendor of your glory. And we await that time when we shall be gathered together with Christ and all the saints around your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy. God of all mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of our lord jesus christ amen now let us join together in praying the prayer that our lord and savior jesus christ taught us to pray with boldness our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. 
May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his favor upon you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and share this good news. And may the peace of Christ be with you always.